Hello guys and welcome back to another cryptocurrency related video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about installing a Bitcoin wallet, a cryptocurrency wallet, whatever you want to call it. So first things first, I'd like to thank Mr. Greenstar for leaving a comment and actually making this video possible. He's the one that asked me, how do I install a Bitcoin wallet? I'm really scared to do so. Is it secure? Um, yes, it's secure. Don't you worry. Um, just make sure that your computer doesn't have any viruses on it. Um, you're not storing a large amount of assets in that wallet and that um, there's no one around you that could possibly steal the information while you're setting it up. So what is a Bitcoin wallet? Essentially, it's a piece of software on your computer that keeps track of all your Bitcoin addresses for you. It allows you to uh, quickly retrieve an address that belongs to you and then uh, quickly send a Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies from that piece of software. So here we go guys, I'm just going to start on a fresh computer that I set up um, to show you exactly how to set um, any Bitcoin wallet up from a fresh install. So the, the first thing I do is I head over to Bitcoin.org and this is like a getting started page for how to install Bitcoin software, what like information about Bitcoin, all sorts of uh, resources. So I'd really recommend Bitcoin.org. So I'm going to be installing two different kinds of wallets, one that's just a Bitcoin wallet and one that's called a multi-asset wallet that lets you actually install multiple different kinds of cryptocurrency in a single piece of software. So if you're looking to install to your desktop, the wallet that I would recommend is Electrum. Now this is a very basic piece of software as you can see here, um, but we're just going to visit their website and try installing their wallet. So we're going to go to the download page, Windows, and then uh, looks like Windows Installer, that would be the best one to choose. We're gonna put that on our desktop. All right guys, so I've downloaded the installer and now we're just gonna double click here. If you're gonna be storing a lot of Bitcoin, I would actually recommend a hardware wallet. I'll link to a video about that. Uh, I made a video earlier just doing a little unboxing of a hardware wallet that I purchased myself. So we're just gonna hit install here and it's gonna go through the setup process. All right, so it's put a little icon here on our desktop. Now I'm just gonna double click that and we'll go through the setup process of uh, setting up your own personal wallet and backing everything up. All right, so after we launch it here, uh, we get a Electrum communicates with a remote server to get information about your transaction and addresses. We're gonna just go through the easy way and select auto connect. Uh, we'll just, you can name your wallet here, so we'll just call this YouTube wallet. And then what kind of wallet do you want to create? So um, there's a few features here. If you just want to set up a regular Bitcoin wallet that's not got any super fancy um, features to it, uh, you can set up a standard wallet. We'll uh, create a new seed here. A seed is just a random number that it uses to create your um, Bitcoin addresses in the future. So it'll create like a random number within the software. Um, and then all your future Bitcoin addresses will be generated using that seed plus a whole bunch of math. So now Electrum's asking us if we want to use a standard or a SegWit wallet. Now, uh, I would personally recommend SegWit at this point. That'll save you a lot of money on fees in the future. And essentially what that does is it sends some of the payment information when you're sending a transaction uh, separately um, off the blockchain. And what that does is reduce the size of your transaction and therefore reduce your network fee that you pay to send your transaction. So we're gonna choose SegWit here. So Electrum has just generated our 12 word seed here. And what that does is it's essentially a set of words that represent a number. And then uh, if you lose your wallet or lose access to your computer, you can still uh, regain access to all of your keys and all of your Bitcoin addresses just by entering the seed into another computer with an Electrum wallet. So this is essentially your backup method and you really wanna make sure that you copy down all of these words um, letter for letter and make sure you don't miss out a single word or lose your backup piece of paper. So the next thing is that Electrum is gonna want me to re-enter my seed words here. So I'm gonna take a photo. Never do this actually, never take a photo of your seed because photos can be leaked, but write down your seed and then at the next step you'll have to rewrite them just to make sure that you wrote them down and Electrum knows that everything is nice and secure. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my 12 words and then Electrum will let me pass on to the next step. So I rewrote my 12 word phrase and I hit next. The next step here is setting up a password. Now this will be asked from you every time you launch your wallet. Um, and it'll also make sure that your keys are encrypted on your hard drive. Don't leave this blank because otherwise your keys will be um, left unencrypted on your drive. And if a hacker gets access to your computer, they essentially can just steal all your Bitcoin. So make sure you choose a secure password and something that you're not gonna forget because going through the hassle of reinstalling Electrum to get your keys back would be quite annoying. For us though, we're gonna choose something basic and it's gonna tell me that. Encrypt wallet file, sure. So now Electrum is generating our addresses based on that seed and they will be unique to us and never used before. So once your wallet opens, this will be the screen that you're presented with. It's a very basic piece of software. Essentially, you have the send tab, so you can type in a Bitcoin address here, a description just for your personal accounts, and the amount of Bitcoin you wanna send. The fee will be calculated automatically and you can adjust it to be higher or lower, and then hit send. Once you hit send, you'll be asked for your Electrum password once again to confirm the transaction. If you go over to the receive tab here, uh, you can see this is your uh, first Bitcoin address. Once you receive a payment to this address, it'll change. But what you can do is you can actually go over here, you can hit show addresses, and then you get a list of all of the addresses that were generated using your key phrase. And then you get a list of all the addresses generated using your seed. So what you can do is you can actually receive Bitcoin to any of these addresses and just go here and copy address, send that to someone, and they can send it to you right here. But the easiest way is just to go to the receive tab and hit copy. All right, so that's how you install the Electrum wallet. Now we're gonna go over and install the Exodus wallet. Now the Exodus wallet is what we call a multi-asset wallet. It's a much fancier, nicer looking piece of software in my opinion. Um, and this is actually the piece of software that I would recommend and that I use personally. So what you do is you go over to exodus.io. I'll leave a link in the description to that. And you go over here to the download uh, button. You can go ahead and look at all the screenshots from the latest release. But right at the top here, you got Windows 64 bit. That's what I'm running. So I'm gonna download that to our desktop once again. Once that's fully downloaded, you'll get a little icon like this, and you're just gonna double click that to open the installer. The setup for the Exodus wallet is actually uh, quite similar to the Electrum wallet. The only difference is that um, the Exodus wallet contains a bunch more uh, options and uh, looks and different little intricate things that make it just, uh, you know, a little bit better than the Electrum wallet. So then you get a message here, Exodus has been installed, you can run it. And it's put another icon on our desktop. Double click that. And your wallet should start opening to the initial setup of the Exodus wallet. All right, so you don't actually have to run the initial setup on Exodus until you receive some funds. So what I'll do actually is it says waiting for my deposit. What I'll do is I'll close down this computer. It's just a virtual machine. I'm gonna open my personal Exodus wallets and send myself a little bit of money so that I can show you how to set up Exodus. And while we're waiting for this guys, I actually did a video on Exodus doing a little bit of an overview slash review of the Exodus wallet and I'll leave a link to that in the description and in the little eye icon in the corner. So this is my personal Exodus wallet and I'm just gonna go ahead and do a transaction here. It's Maybe I can do this all on screen. So we wanna to go to wallets, whatever we wanna receive, we're gonna to go to that, um, that asset. So I'll send some Litecoin since it's cheap. Receive Litecoin and we'll hit up our personal Electrum wallet, wallet, Litecoin, send, send some Litecoin. We'll send, I don't know, five bucks, eh, 10 bucks and we're gonna hit send, send, and it's gonna shoot away, we're good. Go back to our Exodus wallet that we just installed. In a few seconds, our portfolio will update here and we'll be able to see that we just received some Litecoin. 
And there we go, we just received our payment. Now I sent $10 Canadian, but it's showing as 821 US. So what we do is we go down to settings, we go localization, and we can change that to our Canadian dollar. Now you can see I actually received uh, about $10. The price of Litecoin has been changing, so the $10 I sent is now worth $10.04. But as you can see, there's a little red icon next to backup. Now Exodus wants us to create our password and start encrypting our wallet and uh, improving the security. So the first thing it wants is a password and I can put that as our password and no one's really gonna care. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna retype our password. Basically, this is the most user-friendly wallet and it's kind of hard to get wrong. All right, so after you enter your password, the next thing it's going to want you to do is very similar to the Electrum wallet, and that is um, print off or write down your 12-word seed that the Exodus wallet has generated. I'm going to go ahead and take a photo of it. Don't actually take a photo of it because photos are not a very secure way of storing this, but write it down or print it off and store it in a safe or just somewhere very secure like a filing cabinet. Hit next and it asks you to enter your email. I'm going to not do that on screen. So I went ahead and entered a email and what that does is it'll send you an email links that is essentially encoding your 12 word backup phrase. So if you ever lose the 12 words, um, if you still have access to that email, you can still recover your Exodus wallet through an online uh, backup method. Now what I'll actually do guys, if you've stayed this long to the end of the video here, if you grab the 12 word phrase from the Exodus backup screen that you saw there and you enter that into a Litecoin or Exodus wallet somewhere, um, you can actually claim that $10 of Litecoin and send it to yourself. I don't mind, go ahead and do it. Uh, this is a virtual machine anyway, so I'm not gonna be using this Exodus wallet in the future. So just a little Easter egg for you guys. Uh, hope you grab that $10 and use it for something really important. Now, one last note, and I know I've said it earlier in the video, but if you're storing a lot of money, um, do not store it in Exodus. Do not store it on an online wallet or an online exchange. Always store it on a hardware wallet or a paper wallet if you have the chance to do so. Those methods are just a lot more secure and if you don't want to get your funds stolen or hacked out of your possession, then I would really highly recommend buying or investing in a hardware wallet. All right, so that's it for this episode, but the last thing I want to mention is that we have a new podcast that I started through an app called Anchor. Now this essentially lets me record podcasts really easily, quite professionally with little interlude music, little background music. I can just talk into my phone and have a podcast up and running uh, within a few minutes. So to accompany our Blockchain Bash podcast, I've also set up an Instagram where I'm showcasing tokens with cool graphics. Um, I'm updating you on the market cap. So far we have 143 followers and I've only made three posts in the last five days or so. So guys, if you're interested, I'll have the links to all of this stuff down below, and thanks so much for watching.